In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the sensor supplied with your sonic pad to calibrate input shaping. This can also be called resonance compensation, and in basic terms, it calibrates the effect that attempted stepper motor movement has on the actual movements of parts of your 3D printer. Without this feature, you'll start to see defects like ghosting on the surface of your prints as you start to increase speeds. The sonic pad can automatically tune these out if you follow the process I'm about to show you. This is the fifth video in my intermediate sonic pad series, and if you haven't seen the others, you can find links to them in the description below. Just to show you the difference that input shaping can make, I'm printing off this test model which demonstrates the ghosting that we're trying to get rid of. You don't need to do this yourself unless you want to see the difference you're making. To tune input shaping, we'll need to attach the sensor to both the X and Y axis on your printer while the measurements are being taken, which will require a bracket or two. Creality provide SDLs that you can print yourself for brackets that fit to all of their most popular machines. You can find a link to these to download in the description below. This is great if your machine is standard, but mine isn't. On my Ender 3 version 2, I run the Minimus cooler, which is a great way of improving the part cooling on an Ender 3 style printer. Check out the video linked in the description below if you want to see more about the Minimus cooler, and the great news is it's now free. Also, by the time this video comes out, there should be a version that allows you to attach the Sonic Pad sensor. This wasn't available yet, so I needed a different bracket for the sensor, which I designed and printed. Of course, a link to the STL is in the description below if you want it. Once you have the bracket to fit to your hot end printed, you also need to find a way of attaching the sensor to the Y axis. This is easy if you have something like a Core XY printer where the bed doesn't move as the bracket won't need to move from the hot end. However, if you have a bed slinger like this Ender 3 S1 Pro or my Ender 3 version 2, you're gonna to need to come up with a way of attaching the sensor to the bed. Some people have bolt on brackets or even just tape the sensor down. What I did was simply print a holder for the sensor and then not remove it from the bed once the print had finished. Again, I've provided an STL for this in the description if you want to do the same. When you slice the Y axis sensor mount, make sure you move it forward on the bed about 50 millimeters so that it's out of the way when the printer needs to home before doing the test. So now we have our brackets sorted, let's see what else we need to check. When running the resonance compensation process, what the sonic pad is going to do is move a single axis and then measure how the corresponding part on the 3D printer actually moves in response. It will try different movements at different speeds to see how your particular printer transfers movements from the stepper motor to parts of your 3D printer. To ensure that your 3D printer is in the best possible condition before you start, ensure that all of your belt tensions are correct and that you've cleaned away any dirt or dust from any mechanisms. If you have a bed slinger like my Ender 3s, then print off your Y-axis mount and leave it stuck to the bed, and then attach your sensor to the print head before you start. Once your sensor is attached and the wiring is plugged into the sensor and the back of your sonic pad, you're ready to start the test. Make sure that the arrows on the top of the sensor are pointing in the right direction, with Y being front to back and X being left to right. Creality have made measuring resonances very easy and the whole process can be done on the sonic pad itself. To find the measuring resonances procedure on the sonic pad, enter the configure menu, select other settings, and then advanced options. When you then select measuring resonances, you're first asked to select what type of printer you have. Your 3D printer either has the bed move for you to print on the Y axis or the bed doesn't move. For this test, I'm using my Ender 3 version 2, so I select the first option and click next. The next page tells you to attach and connect the sensor to the sonic pad, which we've already done, so again, we can select next. The sonic pad then checks to see if it can see a signal from the sensor, and when it does, we can start the test. The printer then homes all axis before starting the test by applying a series of rapid movements to the X axis carriage. This took around three minutes before it told me it had finished and that it had worked. On the next page, it tells you to move the sensor from the X axis to the Y axis. If you printed the mount, then clip the sensor in now or attach the sensor to the bed in whichever way you've decided to do it. Make sure to leave the wiring plugged into the sensor when you move it. Of course, if you don't have a bed slinger, then you won't be moving the sensor here. The sonic pad will then run through the exact same process on the Y axis, instructing the stepper motor to apply different movements while it measures the result. When it's finished, the sonic pad will restart to save the information it's just recorded to the configuration file so that it's ready for when you next want to print. One last thing I would advise is to disable any slicer acceleration controls if you haven't already. Clipper will now have put an input shaper section in your printer config file and you don't want your slicer interfering with what it's trying to do. Now we have acceleration sorted, it's time to tune pressure advance, which will remove those rounded corners or gaps in surfaces where the extruder doesn't quite keep up with the printhead movements. Click here to go to that video now. I'll see you there. 